I, I was like, I was like, ah, shoot for the moon, I guess. Let's try Neil deGrasse Tyson. I, and um, you know, the casting department came back saying, he's Neil deGrasse Tyson passed. He's never gonna do this. And then I sent it again. Can we ask him again? And then I sent him again. And then like, it wasn't until like the animation came back, like four months later, I was like, well, let's try him one more time. And he finally <laughs> said yes. And I couldn't <laughs> believe now it. You had to ask him four times. Yeah, I think we asked, I asked probably at least three, maybe four times over the course of months. And finally, I don't know why, he just, he was fine with it. And he, he came in and he was amazing. He was so <laughs> kind and thoughtful and it was so bizarre to be voice directing this genius astrophysicist who's chilled with <laughs> Carl Sagan and Stephen Hawking and um, I, I didn't know what he was going to think of the script and I remember he read it and he was like I have a concern and I was like Mr. Tyson <laughs> hit me with what you got you know this thing is so absurd it could be anything right and he was like well, on page three, we describe it as a uh, mind-altering serum, but on page five, it's a mind-altering potion. Potions and serums, of course, not the same. And I was like, well, Neil, you know what? Whatever you want. You want serum? I like the sound of serum. It's serum now. Um, do you have any issue with the Smarticle accelerator? No, that's funny. It feeds him potatoes. Like, <laughs> You can't predict what is going to trigger his, like, you know, uh, like fix it, nerd brain. Um, right, right. When, when we realized that we were getting him, I added a number of lines that were intentionally absurd, kind of si like as a dare, like, is he actually going to read this? Like I added the line, yummy, yummy for my fat little pig tummy, like an hour before the record, like, he's not going to say that. He's not going to say it. And he was so good. He had such a sense of humor. He loved it. He loved doing this character. And he like, he laughed at some of our dialogue, which is like, you know, when you're writing a goofy kids cartoon show and one of the smartest public thinkers of our time laughs at your dumb puns, Smarticle, that's good. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was a very What's rewarding feeling. What's the other part? Feeling. Something about, like, Mabel, there's more to life than fart jokes, Mabel. Like Mabel, that there's more to life out, than fart uh, jokes and laughing at those fart jokes. <laughs> um, while I had him in for a minute, I was like, oh, my gosh, I I've got this smart guy. I could ask him anything. I, I was trying to think of something to ask him. I actually, I did ask him a question. I asked him... I had read a Carl Sagan book saying that uh, humans were the only animal that experienced the pain of childbirth. Um, and people think it's because of the Neolithic revolution when we discovered agriculture, our brains grew super fast in a short amount of time and they be our skulls got too big for the birthing canal. And I asked him like, is that, is that true? And he's like, nope, also horses. Horses are smart. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one piece of knowledge I got from like I could be asking him anything he's like an astrophysicist was the first thing that popped into my head um, an another thing about Neil deGrasse Tyson was somehow I remember at one point he said well that's fine this is like cartoon logic and I was like oh yeah like how um when Wile E. Coyote runs off a cliff and he doesn't fall until he looks down and he said precisely <laughs> and it was like the best day of my life